that organizational and study skills have suffered. So particularly students in grades nine and 10, they haven't seen the inside of a school in a number of years. Uh, their organizational and study skills are severely lacking in terms of organizing, you know, even a binder, um, knowing how to sort of keep things in, tr tr in track so that they can study for an exam. Studying for an exam is, you know, maybe an unheard of thing. And so looking at all of this um, can be really overwhelming for an adolescent student that is really trying to find their place within, you know, their social connections and the academic environment, their learning environment. And when students don't know sort of where they are and what they have to offer, again, they want to pull back. So they're not going to meet with as much academic success as they could. So in terms of what can we do, where can we go? We look at some questions. What can we take away about ourselves and our learning environment? So us as educators, us as those that support students, um, even getting students to sort of look at themselves as individuals, as learners. Where do we as adults that support learners go in terms of shifting what it is that we're, we're bringing to the learning environment? Where are we going to kind of go with um, whatever it is we're going to get students to learn academically, but also what are we learning about our learners as unique individuals, as students that, you know, come with a wealth of um, difficulties or opportunities that they haven't yet realized. It's a big challenge to get students to realize that they do have something to offer. Everyone has something to offer. And in terms of affecting long-term positive change, because ultimately we want students adolescents to buy into the idea that they truly intrinsically have something to give. They have something to give their learning environment. They have something to give their peers, the world around them. But most importantly, they have something to give themselves. They can realize success. So in terms of looking at this from a mental health and wellness perspective, are there things that we can do or programs or uh, ways of teaching and learning that we can shift into? We look at skills that individuals need to have within our society. So global competencies are transferable skills uh, that really give students the opportunity to be 21st century learners, but also contributors. Because we know that this, uh, the world around us, this society that's around us constantly changes. There are things that we learned yesterday that are old news. And so we want to create opportunities for meaningful, deep learning about ourselves, as well as about the world around us that we can sort of take and internalize so that we can give the best of ourselves and strengthen that connection with those around us. So <clears throat> if we think about developing character, developing critical thinking skills, uh, developing citizenship, collaborating, these opportunities provide individuals with the skills that they need in order to uh, be successful within our future. Um, these skills, these competencies apply to every single aspect of our lives. We communicate with each other on a daily basis, whether it is uh, verbally, non-verbally, 
via text online. Uh, we are trying to, you know, be a little bit more creative each day than we were yesterday. We need to have skills in order to um, think critically so that we can solve problems. We can solve problems in our personal life. We can solve problems within our academic life. Um, this opportunity for students to sort of understand what strengths lie within them and what skills they have to offer, have the ability to help them more deeply develop these competencies. When the, these competencies are more deeply developed, people feel more connected to the world around them. They know, again, what they have to offer. So the next generation of students, the next um, sort of flight of, of people who are going to make differences in this world. We know our students and we know that they have the opportunities that we don't even know about yet, that we need to have them comfortable to anticipate. Connecting to who we are, knowing what we have and what strengths we have really allows those opportunities when we anticipate them, that can be a really scary thing. We don't know what the future looks like. If we don't know what the future looks like and we're unsure of what our strengths are, there's a, a little bit of hesitation in us taking risks. We want to give students the opportunity. It's really important that they understand that they have skills, skill sets, to be able to handle those unanticipated possibilities of the future. Character, when I think of character, by learning to recognize what stress and anxiety are. Stress and anxiety hold us back quite a bit, right? Students, high school students particularly, that's what I'm speaking about in this case. Um, they have a great deal of stress and anxiety around interacting with those in their presence by um, setting any kind of goal that they might they think they might not reach. So if I can get someone to really understand how to be a little bit more mindful, how to support their own mental, emotional, physical, spiritual well-being, they are more likely to take on those challenges. Through wellness-based programming, I was able to give students the opportunity to develop with a supportive means uh, resiliency skills a little bit of tenacity, perseverance, learning that, um, yes, challenges are going to come our way, absolutely going to come our way. However, we have the opportunity to move through those challenges. We can lean on the strengths that we have. We can lean on experiences that we know that we have gone through that have made us a little bit stronger. When we give students the opportunity to participate in opportunities to develop critical thinking skills. They can look at a situation and evaluate how they're going to tackle whatever that situation is, whether in future it's them having a flat tire on the side of the road or needing to make a choice between going to a university or a college or whether that choice might be to interact with um, a group of peers that might not be making the best choices. Reflecting on these different opportunities really allows them to improve their overall life each day, knowing that they have tools to be able to handle challenges. They have a skill set within them. They can trust their choices. And this goes back to developing and understanding our strengths 
and being able to make that connection to, I have knowledge of what's inside. I know that I have come across this before. I have the opportunity to make a choice and stick with that choice and be supported. In this wellness-based programming that I've carried out, students were able to recognize when they were facing a challenge, when they weren't feeling themselves, when they needed help. It's a big deal for someone to say, I'm struggling, I need, I need some help. Even as adults, we struggle with that. Think about a, a teenage student in a high school setting. If they're going to admit that they need some help, that's a really big deal. And we want to give students the opportunity to work through that, communicate what kind of help that they might need, what supports might they need. Even just voicing something simple, you know what, I'm not having a good day today. I think I need to spend a little bit of time reflecting. That's okay. There are so many barriers within a social setting for an adolescent student. And oftentimes that holds them back from being able to communicate their needs. They feel like they might be judged amongst their peers. So the beauty of this program was that through this engagement, and I'll go into that in a little bit of detail on a further slide, um, students are able to really stop and think. There's space that is made for them to know that they can voice their concerns. They can voice their feelings. They can stand up for themselves. That's a big deal. Not a lot of students today that I've seen can really take a stand internally say, I'm not, I'm not feeling well. Um, I need to take a break. I don't think that, you know, this situation is for me. There's a little bit of trepidation there. And so through this programming, I'm able to give students a little bit more, um, ability and confidence to be able to do that. When we work together, when we take an opportunity to work together, we know that collectively we can sort of make an improvement. However, we are able to recognize that our strengths individually add something collectively. And so we give other people the opportunity to learn from ourselves. We develop a sense of citizenship through that. We know that we have something to give. We know that we have the opportunity to build up the society around us. But we can only do that if we are confident in ourselves. So in terms of looking at this from an educational standpoint, where does this take us? So through this program that I carried out, this project, um, we surveyed a group of about 200 students. There were different pieces of data that we used. Um, Ontario school boards collect data uh, from a school climate survey. So the school climate survey, it's an anonymous open survey students and families participate in just to give you sort of a direction on the attitudes and feelings and um, issues that are present within the school. And that kind of helps us decide um, sort of where to go with programming. But there is an opportunity to, um, through this, this wellness program that I carried out, conduct a few other um, surveys within an educational context. And so my focus was on students that were in grade nine and 10. And looking at the data from those 200 students, I really was quite shocked. Um, again, just to put this in context, it's post COVID. So we're coming off of, you know, the environment where we weren't connected to people in the first place because 
the pandemic really broke that connection. Um, grade nine and 10 students have a feeling that they do not have allies within that school setting. There's also a large ratio of students that did not have a very strong sense of positive self-perception. So they didn't feel very good about themselves. They didn't feel that they had a lot to offer. So out of this was born that um, wellness-based programming. And I really wanted to take into account what students need. What is it that I can do to help them realize what they have to offer and thrive? So developing an authentic connection to who we are as an individual means um, a few different things. So my programming in this project focused on meeting those identified needs. So working through stress and anxiety, understanding self-care, calming our mind, we can think as adults, we've developed skills to be able to, you know, recognize when we need to take a step back, when things are beginning to get a little bit out of hand. Adolescent students don't have that yet. Remember, they're just learning that environment around them. They're learning where they fit into that space. And through this, having students really develop a strong sense of self as well as body positivity. There were a lot of situations where um, students felt physically that something was holding them back from engaging with their peers. Maybe they didn't um, act like their peers. They didn't look like their peers. So they kind of don't have that space that they feel that like they fit into. And from this, the focus of the programming that I wanted to take a look at was really working through how to recognize stress and anxiety. As adults, we recognize stress and anxiety because we've got a little bit more life experience. How do we cope with stress and anxiety? How do we cope with daily stresses, big things, small things, something you and I think that might be really small is a huge deal to a teenager, right? How can mindfulness-based practices such as reflection or journaling or meditation really give us the opportunity to develop resiliency? What can that really do for us? What are the benefits of breathing? What about stretching and yoga? What can that do for us? How can that help calm our mind and our body? What kind of nutritional support can we bring into focus to support not only our body physically, but also our mind? We all know as adults, we want to eat healthy, get a lot of sleep, really understand that those things tie in with whatever we're going to do physically, right? We're going to go to the gym. We want to eat, you know, healthy meals. We want to support our body that way. But what do those foods and things that we put into our body do for our mind? What are the benefits of cardio and weight workouts? Can those actually do something to help us mitigate stress and anxiety? And so having students really take the opportunity to understand that we can sort of bring them to a place where they um, are able to develop those skills that they need to make positive contributions to their learning and connect with their peers. So in this program, we gave students the opportunity to really understand what stress looks like, sounds like, feels like. How do we know that we are feeling stressed? So how do you know just throw some answers out. How do you know you're feeling stressed? Yep, just shout them out. Like a tightness in the chest. Absolutely, tightness in the chest. Absolutely, that's a huge one. Yes, can't sit still. That is a huge one. Sometimes, um, you know, we find students 
sort of fidgeting or, or they're on their phone or they're, you know, disconnected, can't focus. Yeah. And as adults, we have that confidence to say, Hey, just a second, you know, I need to take a minute and we go for a walk. That is not something teenage students want to do. You know why they don't want to do it? Because they feel like they're going to be judged. Then they feel like they're going to be singled out. They don't, they don't want to involve themselves in being sort of that outcast, so to speak. So they don't do that. And they hold all this stuff in. You ever notice like at the end of the day, maybe you're stressed, like your jaw hurts or like you're tense, your hands, maybe you just, you're not loose and yourself, right? We talked about stress and anxiety being the same. Do we know that they're the same? Do, maybe, maybe we call them the same thing, but they're actually two different things. When specifically are we feeling stress and anxiety? Are we feeling it when we hang around with a super, certain group of friends? Are we feeling it before a test? Why are we feeling it maybe before a test? Are there certain times of the day? Maybe we feel stressed toward the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. There are many different situations when we do feel stressed. You and I can acknowledge that. Again, an adolescent doesn't have that ability to confidently say, hey, I'm feeling stressed. Or they, the opposite happens and they label everything as stress or anxiety because they don't know how to compartmentalize and they don't make the connection between things that are going on in around them and the skills that they need to have to deal with that. So we talk a lot about healthy ways to deal with stress. Most often teenagers, how do you, how do they deal with stress? What are they doing? They do retreat. Yep. What else do they do? They do lash out. What about their eating patterns? Do we think that might have anything to do with it? Junk food and coffee. So I worked at a high school uh, just down the street from a Husky gas station. And like every lunch hour, kids were going monsters, bags of chips. That was their lunch. And so we had a really good discussion about how we can sort of support ourselves. Another important thing, there are many people in a student's life that can support them. However, oftentimes they're nervous about talking to an adult. They don't want to be judged. You know, their friends see them talking to someone. Oh, you were, you were in so-and-so's office talking to them. What were you saying? So Having students understand, um, yes, you're going to make a mistake. Someone might not be super happy about that mistake, but you're learning and there's a bunch of people to support you. Who can you turn to for what kind of support, right? Sometimes children don't want to talk to their own parents and that's understandable. There are friends, parents, there are guidance counselors. There are many people around them that they can turn to for different kinds of support. We took a look at what breath work can actually do to help us with our stress and anxiety. So yes, we're feeling stressed in this moment. What is it that I can do to bring that stress or anxiety level down? How do we even breathe? Anyone ever take a, like an actual, like full breath? What does taking a full breath mean? Anyone actually know? You're like getting down into your diaphragm and the lower part of your lungs. Yeah. It's a lot of us shallow breathe. Exactly. Like so when we breathe, our stomach is actually supposed to expand. So like everyone take a nice full breath right now. Do you feel that like expansion in your stomach? You're supposed to feel that. A lot of us actually hold it in. And like you said, we breathe very shallowly. So there's a connection between breathing and our vagus nerve. Anyone ever hear of your vagus nerve? Yeah. So your vagus nerve controls everything. We're feeling stressed. We're feeling nauseous. We're feeling 
um, jittery, all of that sits in our, in our vagus nerve. How can we support our parasympathetic nervous system to calm ourselves down? You ever get in a situation where like, I know I was in a car accident one time and I was about like 18 and I just remember my whole body, like I just, I went hot and then I went cold and then I went jittery and then I, I was shaking and I didn't know what was happening and a, a million things were flying around in my brain. And all I remember was like, I have to call my mom. I don't know what to do. I got to call my mom. And that's all I did. And I was like, mom, you need to get here right now. She's like, um, I'm just in the middle of dinner. And I was like, I went, I went crazy. And at that moment, if I had known how to calm myself down, I could have handled things a little bit differently. So getting individuals, especially teenagers to kind of check in with their body because they don't, I think they go on autopilot 90% of the time and understanding how dealing with stress every single day and holding things in and really uh, letting that sort of sit in us affects how we breathe. So part of this program was actually understanding what mindful breathing is. Breathing is something that we can do when we feel stress or anxiety. I, I know for me, I was sitting in the doctor's office one time and I was so stressed. I just took a moment and I did some simple box breathing. Anyone ever hear of box breathing? Yeah. It's actually a great way to calm down. So you inhale for four, you hold for four, <coughs> exhale for four, hold for four. You can do it for longer if you choose, but it's a great way to bring those emotions back down to a calm level. When we're calm, we can handle things. When we're not calm, we make decisions that aren't the best, right? They're reactive decisions. And so again, this opportunity in this project that I was working through with some students um, really gave them the opportunity to check in with their body. It's really amazing how students, if you give them the tools and you teach them what they need to kind of do to bring themselves back down to a calm spot, they take the opportunity to think a little bit more rationally. Mindfulness comes into play. We all know that sort of breathing and mindfulness go together. So we talked a lot about what is mindfulness? Mindfulness can look like, yes, meditating, you know, off, sitting quietly on a yoga mat. For me, mindfulness, I love going to the tree farm. I, some, some of you might not be from here at this area, but we have um, a tree plantation out like on the highway. And I absolutely love walking in between the rows of trees. To me, listening to the trees creak in the wind and hearing the wind up in the top of the pine trees. Sometimes I just stop and I smell that like foresty smell with a little bit of pine. That's mindfulness for me. Mindfulness is also sometimes closing the classroom door and I'm just sitting there in silence, listening to my breath and my heart. And so a student sitting at their locker who's feeling stressed can close their eyes and try to tune out everything around them and bring themselves back down to that calm spot. It's lunchtime. They have a test period three. They're stressed about it. We all know that when we're stressed, we're not thinking rationally, right? The thoughts spiral. Then they begin to doubt. Going back to what I said initially, they have strengths to give. They have the ability to be successful. We need to give them the tools to clear the clutter away so that they can realize that success. How can stretching and yoga help us, right? So we talked about before, we're tense at the end of the day, our jaw hurts, right? If we stretch, I used to teach elementary school and I used to um, do EQAO prep. So EQAO is grade three and six testing. 
And grade three, the little kids are like, oh, I got to chew gum and it's fun, right? Grade six kids are a little bit more like, oh, I don't know. Like they're nervous. Before we did the test, we I would make them do some stretching. I would make them do a little bit of yoga to get their blood flowing, right? We all know if we've been sitting here for however long, our brain has like stagnant blood going around. We're not going to absorb anything. So getting our bodies moving also lets us understand that different things, chemicals within our body can be released. Exercise is great, releases endorphins. I feel good, right? Someone mentioned that they couldn't sleep when they're stressed. Having the opportunity to relax. Ever try to go to bed, uh, maybe, you know, you're stressed about something and you're super tight and you can't get like in the right spot in bed because you, you just, you're stressed. You need the muscles to relax. Your body needs to relax. So stretching and yoga can actually help to move stuff out of our body. Anyone go for regular massages? You understand that your body feels a little bit better after a massage because you're clearing out the old stuff that old stagnant energy, right? Every day we have the opportunity to start new. So doing something like yoga or stretching is something we can do anywhere. And again, giving adolescent students the opportunity to do these little things to help them deal with stress or deal with anxiety or deal with things that kind of come up allows them to clear their brain, clear their heart, communicate a little bit more effectively, be able to think more critically, right? Without looking so different because they don't want to look different. They don't, some of them do, granted, some of them do, but some of them feel really uncomfortable when they seem out of place with their peers because they feel they're going to be judged. And so part of my premise on all of this is to help them develop these little ways of dealing with stress and anxiety to do in sort of a quiet way, or, you know, if they want to lead their friends in some stretch and whatever, but this really gives them the chance to refocus and know that they have a clear head for that test, that science test that's coming up next period, they can focus on that, right? I talked earlier about nutrition. What is it that we can do food-wise to support our body? So we talked about those students when they're stressed, they're going to the husky to get monsters and wherever, Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> you can offer if you want to. <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. So those um, monster energy drinks, the big bags of Doritos, students coming with, you know, two cans of like Coke and a bag of chips for lunch, that doesn't do anything for our brain or our body. And I actually had the opportunity to have a dietitian come in and talk about our mood and what we eat and that connection. There's actually a connection between your gut and your brain. And if you don't know this, the the gut brain connection is actually very strong. So there's a lot of links to um, depression. There's a lot of links to anxiety and um, sort of an unhealthy mindset when we have an unhealthy gut flora. I'm not a 
internist, so I'm not going to go into that today, but if that's something that interests you, take a look at it. It's very, very strong connection. There's, yep. 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 So how many people, when you're feeling stressed or you had a bad day, want some comfort food? Yeah. And, and that comfort food looks different for everyone, right? For me, I'm Ukrainian. It is a bowl of pierogies and I just want to eat all of the pierogies and it connects to that serotonin. Serotonin is helping us to, to feel good. Right. And so I wanted the dietitian to come in and really talk about how do the foods that we eat, what we're putting in our body really affect what it is that we are able to do in a day physically, but also mentally, right? If we're eating chips and drinking monsters, I don't think we're sleeping very well. If we don't sleep very well, are we able to focus? Are we able to self-regulate? What kinds of traditional foods can I bring in to really help not only my body physically, but my connection to everything around me, right? My spirit. And I know there's a, a lot of schools that have um, school gardens. And it's really interesting. The students that have been sort of disconnected in, you know, everything uh, and their food, they really take the opportunity when they engage in like the green club or the garden club or whatever. And it's really cool to see them grow this food and want to eat what they've grown and understand that that can nourish their body. There's minerals and good things in the food that we eat that can support us to think clearly, right? We can regulate our body with what we eat. And when you give an adolescent student a little bit of ability, like you said, the grocery list, that's meaningful to them. We're not telling them what to eat. We're encouraging them to think about making good choices. And it's really, that's a great strategy because it gives them ownership and some thought about how to nourish what they need in order to grow physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And when they have that, they're more likely to be successfully academically. It all goes back down to being successfully in an academic way. Sometimes when we take a look at our day, things went well, things didn't go so well. Um, we can get hung up on those things that didn't go so well, right? You and I have skills and strategies to use to get over that. We have resiliency. Adolescent students, again, they are developing those resiliency skills. So having an opportunity to journal or some people like to sketch or draw, great. That is all an opportunity for us to get the stuff that's in our head out. I talked a little bit earlier about moving the stagnant energy with movement yoga, having an opportunity for self-reflection. So through this program, I gave students, they all got a journal. And at the beginning of our sessions that we met together, so we met every Wednesday after school and we just took a moment and we, you know, reflected on our day. What things did we did? What things even happened today? Sometimes our day is so crazy. We're like, what, what even went on today? I don't even know. And we hold all this stuff in. So getting it out on paper in whatever way, whether it's through words, poetry, drawing, doodling, that lets us sort of empty our mindset in order to be in a better space. Because when we hold on to stuff, we're not in a place to learn. We're not in a place to take risks academically or otherwise, right? We are sort of in a, in a space that's not so good. So there's also apps and technology that we can use to sort of help us. So uh, through this 
project, students were allowed to um, purchase uh, different apps that might assist with their mindfulness. So uh, one app that we really used was Insight Timer. And it's free actually. So Insight Timer has um, different, there's a, also a paid version, but there's a lot of good stuff on the free version. Uh, there's a lot of different music. There's a lot of different um, yoga uh, videos. There are courses, there's mindfulness um, led practices. So it's really neat. And students can just do this um, without someone having telling them what they have to do or how they have to do it. This really gives them the opportunity to sort of clear their headspace. And again, that's what we want to do. A few other free apps that they were able to sort of engage with. Um, there's one called the Headspace. There's one uh, we all have probably seen the advertisement for Calm. Um, mind shift CBT, uh, smiling mind is another one. Uh, there's various different ones and there's always ones coming up all the time. So, you know, whatever ones that you can find that work for your students or that work for yourself, they're beneficial. And thinking again, in terms of physical fitness. So we've got the opportunity to sort of clear our mind, but a lot of students were having trouble that they identified in our survey with body positivity, right? So understanding our body is going to be different from our friend's body. Who's going to be different from somebody else's body. Everyone has different abilities. You know, creator gave us different strengths because if we were all the same, nothing would really get done. We need difference, right? So our body has the ability to do things that somebody else's body doesn't. And we nurtured that by learning different weightlifting techniques, learning how weightlifting and cardio workouts can actually support our mental health and wellness. What are the benefits of cardio? What are the benefits of, you know, even lifting small weights? Students wanted to participate but then they were nervous. I don't know my way around a gym. I don't really know what I'm doing. So we had the opportunity to participate in learning how to actually do a workout. That was the most rewarding thing. There were students who had never touched a weight in their life. And they like confidently would go through the weight room and they're like, oh, watch this. And I had students like doing push-ups like with the medicine ball. I was like, wow, like four weeks ago, you had no idea what you were doing. And then they wanted to do circuits and they felt great. They felt stronger, but they also felt good about themselves. You ever like leave a workout or, or after a run or a walk or a ski or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I can take the world on. That was the feeling that they got. And it really was in for me, re rewarding in the sense that these students that participated in this programming were students who traditionally uh, were the, for lack of a better term, the, like the odd kids. They didn't feel like they fit in. They didn't feel like they had gr like a strong, solid group of friends that they wanted to interact with all the time. They didn't have, you know, the um, space in the school that was dedicated to their friend group that they would go to all the time. And they were really introverted. And after participating in this programming, they were reaching out to whoever they were talking to people that they hadn't ever spoken to in the hallway. They're going to functions or events that before they were nervous to go to, they didn't want to participate in. So when they have the opportunity to feel good about their body physically, that affected their mindset. They wanted then to be in class and to interact with their peers. Ultimately, this gave them the confidence that they needed or that they were required to have 
to build that connection with their peers. So once that connection with their peers was strengthened, they were taking the opportunity to take academic risks. They were much more successful in attending class. They actually wanted to go to to class. They came to school. They wouldn't hide in the bathroom. They would go actually to their class. And they were answering questions. They were putting their hand up to offer their thinking. They were willing to work with their peers in a group. That's a huge deal. When you have someone who is introverted and begin to realize that they have strengths and they begin to flip into a little bit more of an extroverted sense, that is a really big deal. So um, just to kind of close up, giving students the opportunity to develop skills and understanding of how to live a holistic life, how to nourish not only their mind and their body, but also their spirit really gives the opportunity to develop empathy toward themselves, toward others, give them the opportunity to understand that we make mistakes, but we have a lot of things to offer. We have a lot of strengths that we can um, bring to the world around us. When we realize those strengths, we can connect to other people in a more realistic way. We have the opportunity to communicate, you know, different thoughts and ideas with them, build friendships with them, work with them in a capacity where we can solve a problem. We all know that the world, as we grow up, the world is sort of um, a really dynamic place that is always changing and we can't go through it by ourselves. We can't do this, can't do everyday life by ourselves. There are people that we need around us that support us, that we interact with and that we have, you know, the ability to teach or learn from. And that strengthens us. And so connecting to who we are as individuals, knowing what strength I have and where my interests lie and how I can nurture that, whether it be through food, through yoga, through mindfulness, through breathing, knowing that I can support myself, I can build that connection with those people around me and I can really be successful, whether it is in school or whether it's life outside of school. These are skills that we need for long term. We have the ability to realize that success. And so anything that we can do to kind of nurture that opportunity, we need to take. So that is the end of my presentation. If anyone has any questions or anyone wants to add any thoughts, you're more than welcome to share. Otherwise, I really appreciate that everyone kind of came and offered their thinking and their ideas and um, took the opportunity to hear what I had to say. Thank you.